Good morning. <laughs> Today at the Edmonds Chamber of Commerce Networking Breakfast, we are excited to have Leslie Lawrence, who is a board certified music therapist. She opened her practice, Crystalis Music Therapy, in 2021 to better support individuals struggling with mental health in her community. She has transitioned into a community based program and hopes to continue expanding. Music therapy is the clinical use of music as a tool in therapeutic relationship, working on non musical goals. Please help me welcome Leslie. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me today. Um, I am Leslie Lawrence, and I opened my business, Crystal's Music Therapy, in 2021. Uh, my first thing I want to go over is just about me. I want you guys to kind of get to know me and my background um, in order to know where I came from and where I'm landing now. So I grew up in the Pacific Northwest. I grew up on Cornado Island. Um, and that's where I did all of my, my schooling, elementary through high school. Through that, I was in tons of choirs. Choirs were kind of my home base. Uh, in middle school, I started to songwrite. Um, and that is how I really dealt with life stressors. Uh, middle school is not an easy time for kiddos. Uh, and it was not an easy time for me either. So songwriting is where I really was able to express my emotions and be able to really start to understand what I was feeling. Um, after my uh, high school, I went to Edmonds Community College, uh, <laughs> go Edmonds, uh, where I got my AA in, all, in general studies. Um, I was in Soundstation, which is their jazz ensemble, um, vocal jazz ensemble, and I had just the best time ever with that. Uh, and I just know that, that music has been in my life for forever, and it has always been a support for me, and it has always been a community um, support. So I decided that I really wanted to pursue a degree that incorporated music and incorporated being there for people. That's kind of where I started. That's where I found music therapy. And um, I decided I really wanted to get away from my hometown. I wanted to get away from Washington and just really learn who I was in a different place. So I decided to go to Berkeley College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. So I went all the way to the other side of the United States. <laughs> and I ended up getting my BA in music therapy and a minor in psychology. Now that is a four year program and within that program I do five, I did five pro practicums uh, and with those practicums it is five different populations. Um, so with that I did, let's see, childhood education, I did psychology, uh, more mental health based, um, I did community based music therapy, seniors, uh, neurologic music therapy, wide, wide range of different clinical populations. Um, and so I worked with that population for one whole semester, working under a clinical supervisor. So I have a lot of different experience with a lot of different populations. Um, and my minor in psychology. So that is really taking uh, what music and the brain and how their relationship is and, and using that in our skills in therapy. Uh, now, after I got my, my degree, my training was a 1,200-hour internship um, that is required for the American Music Therapy Association, um, and I did that with Snohomish County Music Project. They unfortunately have dissolved through the pandemic, uh, which is very sad to me because they were a very great community-based, um, school-based uh, program. Um, and I learned so much from them. I think I worked under five different clinical music therapists who all were board certified. Um, and I got to work with a wide variety of population there as well. That's where I really started to learn who I wanted to be as a therapist. Um, and with that internship, I actually developed a team brief group within a high school that had experienced a shooting. Um, and through that, uh, I, I, I started it with a grief and loss group. It ended up being really just a mental health support group. Uh, we, did, we ended up making playlists for each other. 
Uh, we ended up talking through music, sharing our own music, and sharing our own experiences through life. Um, and that is where I really fell in love with mental health and being able to work in mental health. Um, now then I went into an NMT clinical course. So NMT is Neurologic Music Therapy. That is a continuing education kind of credit, but it, this one is a three-day intensive. Uh, so I went and I got to learn from other neurologic music therapists. We got to do um, kind of clinical um, role-playing with that and seeing how music and the brain really, really work. So neurologic music therapist really works with the brain. And I will get into that a little bit more later. Um, and then lastly, I sat for my board certification. So board certification is a three hour test. I had to go into a testing center, uh, 150 questions, 130 of them are graded and you must get a 95 or more in order to pass that board test. So music therapists, when you see that MTBC, that is what it stands for, music therapy board certified. That means that they went through all of that training and sat for their boards and they are now a clinical board certified music therapist, which is me. <laughs> I started, um, yep. Uh, so my work history, I started my first ever job with a, another Seattle private practice that is still to this day running called Life on Music. Um, and my supervisor there also works at uh, Children's Hospital, Seattle Children's Hospital. She's an amazing, amazing music therapist. Um, and then I moved into more of my zone, which was mental health. That was Cascade Behavioral Health Hospital, Smoky Point Behavioral Health Hospital. And I worked there through the pandemic. <laughs> and uh, that was my first real like full-time job. And through the pandemic was really, really tough on people. I had several, several, several people that kept coming back into the hospital, keep readmitting into the hospital. And the one thing that I would hear over and over was, this is where I get the most support. I don't have any support out in the community. Um, this is where people really understand what I'm going through. Um, and so I took that and I thought, okay, how can I better support these individuals outside of the hospital to where they don't have to keep readmitting into the hospital over and over again to be able to feel safe, to be able to feel like they're in a community. And so that's when I decided I wanted to open my own business. Um, now, I, I am more mental health focused. That is kind of my jam that I really like, but I have grown into this community-based program. So when I first started, I had a lot of nursing homes come to me, a lot of senior living facilities come to me because they, they really needed music for um, their residents. Uh, a lot of it was music health, mental health based, right? A lot of people are having a lot of anxiety, depression. They weren't able to have visitors in, into their facilities. Um, and so I started to kind of widen my scope. All right, maybe seniors is, is, is my jam as well. So I, I'm more open-minded a year later and able to say, you know, I'm a, a community-based music therapy practice where whatever the community needs is what I am going to serve. Um, so that is how Chrysalis Music Therapy came to be and my background to where I am now. Now we'll move on to my kind of mission and what I do in music therapy. So what I offer at Chrysalis is individual sessions. Those are one-on-one -on -one usually. I have a few um, clients who are dual. So I have like siblings, um, I have Two individuals that are in the same um, adult family center, so we work together. Um, but I go to these individuals' homes or to their group homes or any type of nursing facilities, and I am working one-on-one -on -one with those individuals. I also work small group sessions. Uh, those are three to seven individuals with common goals. This can be really difficult for me. <laughs> I have found throughout this year because Goals are so, so person-centered. It's every single person has a different goal. But the greatest thing about music therapy and what I do in my clinical experience is I take that and I say, all right, I'm going to adapt it to every single person in this room. 
I, I'm, everybody's going to feel included. Everyone um, is going to be able to participate in everything we do. Um, and then lastly here, we have contractual sessions. Uh, so this is through any type of organizations or facilities to offer music therapy to patients, residents, and staff. Um, so that are, those are more well-established businesses that really want to add music therapy for any of their staff, um, whether that is kind of um, more of like a workflow, right, getting out any anxieties for the day, getting out any depression, um, and being able to really start working and, and, and building up um, community within their workspace. Um, I also have residents, you know, in, in nursing homes, like I said, um, and then I'm also working with a larger mental health facility, outpatient mental health facility in Green Lake called the Mission for Michael, um, and they are a, uh, they work with acute mental health disorders, um, and they're a partial hospitalization program, so that means that they come in for a, a certain amount of hours each day throughout the week to uh, be in programming, or they have a um, more of a a half half of that. So they come in even less hours, but they're still in programming throughout the week. All right. And then of course, let's define music therapy. What is music therapy? It's the clinical evidence-based use of music to accomplish non-musical, social, emotional, physical, or cognitive goals. Right. So we'll we'll break that down a little bit later when I go into the different populations that I work with. But music therapy looks different for every single person. As a, as a business, I really want um, to focus on the whole person approach. Um, so that means that you are involved in your own treatment. You get to decide what we're working on. You are an active participant in making goals, um, objectives, whatever you want to work on. I'm going to listen to you, and we are going to work on those things through music. Right? Um, and no experience is necessary. You do not need to know any instruments. You don't have to be a singer. You just have to love music. If music is something that touches your soul, if it's something that you really love, even if it's just playing some music in the background, you're a great candidate for music therapy. No experience is necessary. All right, now this, this is in my important slide. <laughs> this is what I get asked a lot or are compared to a lot is music therapy versus music lessons, education, and entertainment. So music therapy works on non-musical goals, such as life skills, right? Music lessons and education, they are working on specifically music goals. So if I am going in and I have a client who really wants to work on guitar, that is totally fine. But we are working on um, self-esteem, we're working on identifying emotions through music, right? If we learn uh, two different chords, a major chord versus a minor chord, right? What is the emotion between each one of these chords? So we're looking at those life skills instead of the music skills, right? Music skills are just an added bonus sometimes. Um, and then I use client preferred music. So your music is what is going to be most beneficial to you. It's the, the music that really touches you yourself. Um, so I am not going to bring in my preferred music to a session. Um, I am going to ask you what you like to listen to. And I will go and I will learn that music on the guitar, the piano, or vocals, whatever it may be. I will learn your music. Entertainers usually have more of their own music that they're sharing or music that they really love. They have that kind of guideline of, I love country music. I'm going to go and play country music. Um, so I am not an entertainer. I'm not an educator. And I don't do music lessons. All right. That's kind of, I always get told, oh, the entertainment's here. I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, and people, I always go in and say, oh, we're going to have so much fun. Well, we're going to work today, but I guess we can have fun with it. <laughs> so that's kind of the, the definition of, bet of between music therapy, music lessons, education, and entertainment. All right. So music and the brain. This is my fun fact. I love to tell people this fact. Music is one of the only things that can actually light up and touch every single part of your brain. It's involved in movement, it's involved in memory, 
that's involved in emotions, executive functioning, speech and language, recall, fine and gross motor skills, etc. So as a music therapist, I'm, I'm trained in this, right? I'm still learning about the brain as everyone else is as well. But we learn, we, we use these, this knowledge of what the brain and the music relationship is to then use this music as a tool to accomplish those things. So to touch each part of those brain, of your brain. Um, so use this knowledge. All right, now let's go into the fun part. The different um, uh, people that I work with or populations that I work with. So NMT, Neurologic Music Therapy, using the knowledge of music and the brain to support neurofunctioning, such as stroke rehab, memory, care, and traumatic brain injury. So Gabby Gifford is a great, great um, resource for me to, to be able to explain what NMT is. So Gabby Gifford was a senator who was shot, um, and her speech and language part of her brain was completely destroyed. That's on the left side of the brain. Now, Melody is on the right side of the brain. So she worked with a neurologic music therapist and a, and a speech therapist, and they were able to retrain her brain through melody to speak again. So before she could ever have a conversation with just, just speaking like I am now, she sang. She used melody to rewire her brain to put that speech and language on the right side in her melody center of her brain. That is how powerful music can be in the brain. You can rewire it with music, with stroke rehab. Um, if somebody's gait is off, right? They're dragging one of their, their feet. Um, they're having to use a walker, right? It's very uneven. We can use rhythm to actually train the brain to help that brain stimulate, okay, it's this foot, then this foot, then this foot, then this foot. And we use your preferred music to do this, right? We can speed up that tempo, we can slow it down. And so we use that knowledge to help the brain reestablish connections, right? So that's NMT, that's one thing that I'm trained in. Um, mental health. So individuals struggling with depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation, substance abuse, eating disorders, et cetera. We also work with facilities that support these individuals, rehab centers, residential programs, outpatient centers, schools, et cetera, right? So mental health is my, is my big one that I like to work with. Um, and I want to share a little bit um, a session idea that I have or I, I've used in the past. So I'm gonna get my guitar out, all right? <laughs> All right, so this is one of the songs that I, I share in mental health, and I'll sing it just real fast for you. I'm broke, but I'm happy. I'm poor, but I'm kind. I'm short, but I'm healthy. Yeah. I'm high, but I'm grounded. I'm sane, but I'm overwhelmed. I'm lost, but I'm hopeful, baby. What it all comes down to is that everything's gonna be fine, fine, fine. Cause I've got one hand in my pocket and the other one is giving a high five. So. I really teach in this song is about dialectics. So you may have heard of dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT, right? Dialectics, I'm going to read the definition here that I give to my clients. The word dialectical describes the notion that two opposing ideas can be true at the same time. In DBT, there's always more than one way to think about a situation and all people have something unique and different to offer, right? So in this song, there are tons of dialectics. Right? So we use this to anchor that idea of what a dialectic is in, in words, right? I'm broke, but I'm happy. So two opposing things happening at the same time. We also use it in, in the musical aspect too. Listening to a song that's super upbeat 
but is talking about grief and loss, right? That's a dialectic in its own in the music form. So we use this to kind of anchor a lot of ideas and teach some of these mental health ideas to clients. Is that down? I had one where I'll show it to you. I don't think I'll see it because I think I'm running out of time. Okay. So we got senior care, so senior living care, um, including memory care. One of those things that I do is, is memory recall as well as reality orientation. So a lot of the times I use this song, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning, to really establish that reality orientation. So I will ask them, what month is it? What day is it? How are you feeling? How is your day going? A lot of the times I'll get, wow, I should know that. I don't know that. So we work together in finding those answers. I will ask several different questions, right? Is it warm outside? Is it cold outside? What? What season are we in? So we narrow it down and we give those people to set this a sense of self, right? You're able to, to discover what month it is together, right? We're giving you, you that, that ability back, right? And then my last one that I work with is developmental disabilities. I work with a few kiddos who are working on uh, regulation skills, emotion regulation skills, um, as well as social skills, right? Being able to to make friends and, um, and keep friends and, and keep everything going. Right. Community support, how you can get involved. Take business cards, take flyers, posters, promote in the community. Just get talking, all right? If you wanna take me out to coffee or I'll take you out to coffee, all right? Um, I love coffee and chats. I love, love, love coffee and chats. And I would be more than happy to sit down with you and really share more on what I do. If you know an organization or want to make a connection, please do it. You can email me, call me, and make that su suggestion. Um, I will reach out to practically anyone. <laughs> um, yeah. And how to refer, reach out. If you're thinking about services, give us a call or email. We have a, ten, a free 10 minute cons um, consultation where we'll describe the how, what, when, and why. Uh, we don't take insurance at this time. Um, music therapy is for these board certified music therapists are a national licensure and not a state licensure. So insurance insurances don't really like us right now. We are working on that as a Washington State Music Therapy Association um, in getting those bills passed so we can be a state licensure and get insurance reimbursement. Process, consultation, intake. Um, service agreements, assessment sessions, sessions, review, review on goals and objectives. So this is just kind of the process, the step-by-step. -step. The sessions is where the bulk of things happen. All right, and my contact info. Um, so yeah, if you ever want to reach out, give me, give me a shout and I would love to talk more with you. Um, on the table are my business cards as well as a pamphlet that kind of shares a little bit more about music therapy. Um, and what I do. So thank you so much for letting me come up here and share this with you. We'll go back. We'll do we'll do the memory care song. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll put the I'll put the the, uh, the actual month of the day. It's a Wednesday. Uh, the feeling we're just gonna say beautiful because that's the original lyrics. And everything's going my way is the original lyrics. I'm just gonna do that. All right. <laughs>
because getting your foot in the door is just so it's difficult. Stuff, so, right here, and that perfect. Be, uh, yeah, if anybody has any, please let me know because I would love, I would love to work with the center for sure. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you.